Welcome back to video number five. In this video, we're going to build upon what we learned in the last video about the synchronous and asynchronous features of Cypress and explicitly look at how to handle non-Cypress async promises. So if you remember, any Cypress command with the CY dot syntax, anything that's built into Cypress, is going to queue up and then run in order. But if we're using some sort of non-Cypress command, in the last video we looked at console logs, but maybe you're looking at like a network request or want to do something with some data that's coming in, if it's not a Cypress command, it's going to uh, run first uh, before any of the Cypress commands. So the the learning goal in this video is, is pretty simple. We're going to look at when to use the dot then method in Cypress, which is built into Cypress, to explicitly handle non-Cypress promises. So let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so a quick refresher on our last video. We saw that any of these CY commands are going to run in order. They'll run sequentially, sequentially, but then this console log, since it's not a Cypress specific command, it's going to skip the line and run first. And so um, one thing that we can do is if you're trying to um, run a console log sequentially, you can use this cy.log and that'll actually print to the the little Cypress um, command uh, runner window, or excuse me, test runner window. And so you'll be able to see this print in order. Um, and it's helpful for when you're console logging and you want things to run in order, but this can only be used for console logging. But let's take a, a quick look at this. So we, if we save this and then we switch over, um, again, making sure that I've got um, two terminals running, one with uh, the npm start command on whichever, um, whichever operating system that you're on. So I'm using Windows. I've got that npm run start Windows command going. And then in the second, uh, in the second terminal, I've got the CY open command running, which, which pops this open. So if I open up the test and I inspect the console, we can see test is finished, is already printed here. We wait the 5,000 seconds. And now we have the CY log, Cypress log used. So, that's helpful, but again, can only be used for logging information. Uh, there's there's not really, like you can't go ahead and then like grab that information and then store it in a variable or like take a, a subsequent action after you have that information. You're, you're just using it for logging. So Cypress does allow you to use the dot then syntax, which uh, will allow you to uh, run a Cypress command, and then when that command successfully executes, it can run another command, even if it's a uh, even if it's a not a Cypress command. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So if we pop back over here, what we can do instead of this console log and this, we can get rid of the CY log, and then I'm actually going to cop. Uh, cut this console log. Actually, I'm going to cut the whole ES lint disable piece as well. So we're going to visit, we're going to find by placeholder text and type, and then we're going to wait the 5000 milliseconds like we did before. This time, instead of putting the console log afterwards, because we've seen that putting the console log afterwards does nothing aside from hit that console log immediately. What we can do is use dot then and this is just like if you've used dot then in any other project, it'll operate similarly where you have the callback function. And then inside of it, we can run whatever command we want. So in this case, it's a console log. Maybe you're um, fetching some data after this. So maybe you make like an Axios request or a fetch request. Um, so we'll visit, we'll find my placeholder text, we'll wait, and then we should see the, the test is finished at the end rather than immediately hitting. So let's take a look. I'm going to stop this, run it, open up my console. And so notice now, test is finished, hits at the end. So running it one more time, we can see that the visit command is hit. There's nothing in the console yet. We're waiting 5,000 milliseconds. And now the test is finished. So 
again, kind of a, um, a smaller scale use case here with console logging. But if we take a look at the test, what we could do inside of here is you could do, uh, you know, like I said, like a fetch request. And then if you had your, you know, your API dot com or whatever, you know, whatever you had inside of here, you could then do something with that data. Say you had like a variable up top that you wanted to store some information in and um, use that further down in your test or uh, you wanted to make sure that a certain element on your page loaded first and we checked for that element and then making um, a network request. So it's a really powerful tool to be able to use this dot then that allows you to use non-Cypress commands in the synchronous Cypress fashion, similar to how it, it queues up these, these commands. So this is kind of a way of like almost like hijacking the Cypress commands to use for um, non-Cypress commands. And in this case, we looked at console logging. But again, um, the dot then can be used for any sort of uh, non-Cypress uh, asynchronous promise um, commands that you're looking to run in your, in your test. So I went ahead and grabbed uh, an actual API, the SpaceX API um, endpoint, and let's take a look at what this might look like in a in a more sophisticated example. So we can drop this down to like two seconds just for this case. And uh, beneath the console log, we can do we're just going to use the fetch API. And so I have this uh, API dot SpaceX data dot com slash V3 slash missions. And then we can use our dot then inside of here, since this is a promise. So we'll get our response and then we'll response.json it. And then after that, we'll grab the data and we'll, uh, I'm gonna grab this um, ESLint disable bit and then console log the data and let's see about formatting there we go okay and then this looks like it needs some extra space no console with an e cool all right so we're just using a, a basic uh basic fetch here to request some data and then we're going to just we're going to console log that data but this is to to show you kind of inside of this dot then now inside of here we can get rid of this test is finished one now inside of here we're using a non cypress uh asynchronous promise uh, where we're fetching some data. And so we can, we don't see any CY inside of here. We're just console logging some data down here after we've fetched it, converted it to JSON um, and, uh, or converted from JSON and then, and then console log that data. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So I'm going to restart the test. Console was cleared. We're waiting 2000 seconds. And now inside of our console, we have our SpaceX data. So the cool thing about that is then if I wanted to grab like, again, the, the first um, the first item in that array, I could check the mission name and make sure that it's fetching correctly. Or I could check that it um, that the array here has a, a given length. Maybe I'm expecting 10. Uh, maybe I'm expecting that it should have some length greater than zero. So really, um, really cool opportunity to kind of, again, hijack that that series of Cypress synchronous commands by using the dot then this dot then unlocks the ability to then continue using promises because if we put this fetch on the outside like we saw in the last video that would just run first there might be some other um, commands that we need to to run first so we might need to visit a certain page we might need to type something we might need to click on a button and we want all those things to run first before we then, you know, make our 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 fetch here, make our our uh, our get request, whatever whatever it may be. So recapping, we saw in the previous video that Cypress is going to run in order, but any non-Cypress commands are going to run first. So in this video, we're taking advantage of dot then 
off of Cypress commands. So remember that there does need to be a Cypress command initially. But if we add dot then, we can then utilize non Cypress commands like fetching data to then run sequentially as we'd expect. So in the next video, we're going to build upon this idea by building out some more assertions. So we'll actually be able to test that an array should have a certain length, that a text should have a certain value, that a button should exist or should not exist, things like that that'll actually get a little bit more in-depth into writing some, some more tests. So thanks again, as always, for watching. As always, check out our blog and community pages for more information, cool testing tricks, ways to use Lambda test and incorporate it into your workflow, and uh, just learn more. So thanks again, and I will see you next time.